last video, we have started to analyze the consequences of the presence of an externality. So we started with the example of a smoker who exerts a negative externality on a non-smoker. And we started with this, this graph where we see a constant marginal cost curve and we see that the private marginal benefit that the smoker has and according to which the smoker decides how much to smoke in this very simple model um, is different from the social marginal benefit that this, this society that is composed of two people has. And so consequently, because of that negative externality, we have arrived at a different, at a lower optimal level of consumption than we would if we let that smoker simply decide how much to smoke. So in other words, the socially optimal amount of smoking is lower than the privately optimal amount simply because of that damage that the smoking does to the other person. So we want to look at this um, a little bit more formally with a, a simple example. So here we are in an economy where we have two consumers, one and two. Each of them has an endowment omega and can consume two types of goods. Good X, that is a private good with no externality, and good Z, that has an externality on the other consumer. Now, we assume here that things are very simple. So um, each person's budget constraint is simply the endowment that person has equals XH plus ZH, which means the price is for each is price for each is one, and they can at no cost convert one into the other which if you want to be fancy, you could call production. Now, because good Z has an externality on the other consumer, it is part of each consumer's utility function. So here for, for person one, person one gets utility from three things, their own consumption of good one, sorry, of good X one, their own consumption of good Z1, but also of the other person's consumption of good Z. So that's Z2. So that's the amount of Z that is consumed by person two. So if this is cigarettes, then person one's utility depends also on how many cigarettes person two smokes. Okay? And the same goes for, for person two. We see here that that person derives utility from their consumption of good X, from their consumption of good Z, and also from person one's consumption of good Z. That's the basic setup. Right? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to compare, again, what is the privately optimal consumption of, of X and Z, but especially Z, relative to the socially optimal consumption of Z. And is there a discrepancy? And what does, if there is, what does this discrepancy depend on? Now to do though, to do so, we apply a little trick, namely that we take the budget constraint, solve for X and substitute that into this utility function. So for person one, what the utility function looks like then is it's W1 minus Z1 plus U1 Z1 plus V2, sorry, V1 Z2. Right, so, so I've just taken that budget constraint and substituted it into that utility function. Why am I doing this? Because now I only have one variable that person one can control, and that's how much of good Z that person uses. So I assume. Person one exhausts their entire endowment and splits it between X and Z. And so once I know how much they consume in X in optimum, I also know how much of Z they consume or vice versa. So to find their privately optimal consumption, we do what we've learned in micro courses before this one. 
which is we take the first derivative of that utility function with respect to z1 and do the same then for person 2 with respect to z2 and see what happens. So, here you can see the competitive equilibrium. Um, the competitive equilibrium that then defines the optimal level of, of z. Okay. So we've taken the first derivative and we know that the price of, uh, of uh, z equals 1. And so in competitive equilibrium, when we take the first derivative of that equation here at the bottom with respect to z and assume there's an interior solution, so we assume that the first order condition at its optimum equals, uh, equals 0, um, we arrive at that equation. Okay, so, so if we take that first derivative we, with respect to z1, we arrive at minus 1 plus the first derivative of lowercase u1 with respect to z1, and that equals 0, and from that we come to this condition. Okay. So basically, the first two equations here define that competitive equilibrium. The third is not important for the individual competitive equilibrium, but it will be important for when we look at the, at the socially optimal level of consumption across both. Now, that first equation here is very important because it tells us that this is the level of Z, the consumption of Z, at which for each person, the private marginal utility equals the private marginal cost. And now in the next step, what we wanna do is we wanna see, well, what happens if we have a social planner? So here we have a social planner that has, for simplicity's sake, utilitarian preferences. So that social planner simply wants to maximize the joint utility of both now not subject to the budget constraint of each, but to a combined budget constraint. Now, if we, if we do that, you can try this at home. Um, you have to set up a Lagrangian um, and then do the derivatives of, uh, of that joint utility function with respect to, to Z1 and Z2. Um, you will arrive at two first order conditions. And so, so that the, the equilibrium solutions for, uh, for that social planner problem, um, you can see here, okay? So, so you, you, can, you can see them down here. Um, and they look different from the first order condition in the privately optimal case. Now, what we will do here to, to just to distinguish the case where one where, where each consumer decides in isolation and where the social planner decides, we call the, the amount of Z that each person uh, assigns on in isolation Z comp or competitive markets, and the amount that is decided by the social planner as Z op, as in the optimal amount. Okay? The, so, the socially optimal amount. Okay? And so you can see here, just as we had in this, this graph that I showed at the start of this video, um, the, the socially optimal amount will factor in the externality the consumption has on the other person. Okay? Here we obviously only have two people. So the optimal amount of consumption of, of Z1, so the amount of Z that is consumed by person one, is defined by the marginal utility person one gets from their consumption of Z1 plus the marginal utility the other person. If we had more people, then there would be more terms in that summation. And again, that has to equal the marginal cost, which is still one. Okay? And now we wanna think whether if, if we take those two levels of consumption, under what condition is the optimal level of consumption higher or lower than the, op, uh, than the, the uh, level of consumption that people decide in isolation? 
Now that depends on the externality. The externality is a positive one or a negative. So let's assume that the externality is positive, um, which, which means that this first derivative is, is positive. So the more the other person consumes, the better this is for me. Now, if you remember the first order condition, um, to put this very simply, was u prime plus v prime equals 1. Okay? Um, now, so that was the case for the optimal. So I'm going to just call this opt. Uh, for the optimal case, we also know that from the competitive case, u prime com equals is not zero but equals one now if we know that this v prime that this is greater than zero it must be that u prime pump is greater than u prime opt okay so that 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 the, the marginal utility under, um, under individual utility maximization must be higher than the marginal utility under, uh, under a social op. Okay, simply because, I mean, you can do that maths yourself to, 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 to really, you know, think about this deeply. And um, once that uh, V prime is positive, it must mean that and, and both equations uh, have one on the right hand side, it must mean that the, this, the, the marginal utility in the competitive case is, the, is higher than the marginal utility in the, um, in the social planner case. But what does that imply for the optimal amounts? Well, does this imply that the optimal amount the socially optimal amount is also lower? No, exactly the opposite. Remember again from, from a previous video, we graphed the marginal utility curve, which was a downward sloping curve. And we said that if the marginal utility is high, so we are somewhere here, it must mean that the level of, of, of that argument must be low. It's a downward sloping curve. Right? Whereas if the marginal utility is high, that is the case in the optimal, with the optimal consumption, and that's the competitive consumption, um, it must mean that the argument is high. Right? And so, so it must mean that the level of consumption is, is already very, very high. Remember the marginal utility curve is a, a result of the utility curve looking something like that, whereby the, the slope of that utility curve, the further you go along with respect to Z, the flatter that, that slope becomes. That's what's shown in this marginal utility curve here, which, which simply doesn't graph on the vertical axis, the utility, but the marginal. Okay, and so if we have a higher marginal utility, that implies that we have a lower level of Z. If we have a low marginal utility, that implies that we have a high level. Of Z. So, what does this all show us? It shows us with a simple example that if there is a positive externality, people actually consume less than the socially optimal amount. That's not efficient, right? So the, the example uh, here, you know, we, I'm, I'm sure everyone's um, tired by now of, of COVID examples, but a, a very strong example was the example of mask wearing. So um, wearing a mask has very little benefits for oneself, but a huge, a, a huge positive externality on others, right? And so um, because of the fact that for one's oneself wearing a mask is not very beneficial a lot of people may choose not to wear one um 
and and the optimal amount of mask wearing is obviously a lot higher so if everyone wears a mask um the, the infection rates go down a lot because of uh, the way the way these masks these ppe masks simply work right so, so that's an example for uh socially efficient consumption that is a lot higher than what would be privately efficient and what we've done here and in the previous video was to look at the economics behind it.